Saint John Bosco had a vision of heaven in the form of a dream, which he related to his boys during one of his famous goodnight talks. In 1876, his recently deceased disciple Saint Dominic Sovio appeared to him in a dream. Saint John Bosco told his pupils, As you know, dreams come in one's sleep. So during the night hours of December 6th, while I was in my room, whether reading or pacing back and forth or resting in my bed, I am not sure, I began dreaming. It suddenly seemed to me that I was standing on a small mound or hillock, on the rim of a broad plain so far reaching that the eye could not compass its boundaries lost in vastness. All was blue, blue as the calmest sea, though what I saw was not water. It resembled a highly polished, sparkling sea of glass. Stretching out beneath, behind and on either side of me was an expanse of what looked like seashore. Broad, imposing avenues divided the plain into grand gardens of indescribable beauty, each broken up by thickets, lawns, and flower beds of varied shapes and colors. None of the plants we know could ever give you an idea of those flowers, although there was a resemblance of sorts. The very grass, the flowers, the trees, and the fruit, all were of singular and magnificent beauty. Leaves were of gold, trunks and boughs were of diamonds, and every tiny detail was in keeping with this wealth. The various kinds of plants were beyond counting. Each species and each single plant sparkled with a brilliance of its own. Scattered throughout those gardens and spread over the entire plain I could see countless buildings whose architecture, magnificence, harmony, grandeur and size were so unique that one could say all the treasures of earth could not suffice to build a single one. If only my boys had one such house, I said to myself, how they would love it, how happy they would be, and how much they would enjoy being there. Thus ran my thoughts as I gazed upon the exterior of those buildings, but how much greater must their inner splendor have been. As I stood there basking in the splendor of those gardens, I suddenly heard music most sweet, so delightful and enchanting a melody that I could never adequately describe it. A hundred thousand instruments played, each with its own sound, uniquely different from all others, and every possible sound set the air alive with its resonant waves. Blended with them were the songs of choristers. In those gardens I looked upon a multitude of people enjoying themselves happily, some singing, others playing, but every note, had the effect of a thousand different instruments playing together. At one and the same time, if you can imagine such a thing, one could hear all the notes of the chromatic scale, from the deepest to the highest, yet all in perfect harmony. Ah yes, we have nothing on earth to compare with that symphony. One could tell from the expression of those happy faces that the singers not only took the deepest pleasure in singing, but also received vast joy in listening to the others. The more they sang, the more pressing became their desire to sing. The more they listened the more vibrant became their yearning to hear more. As I listened enthralled to that heavenly choir I saw an endless multitude of boys approaching me. Many I recognized as having been at the oratory and in our other schools, but by far the majority of them were total strangers to me. Their endless ranks drew closer, headed by Dominic Sovio, who was followed immediately by Father Alisonati, Father Kilai, Father Gilitone and many other clerics and priests, each leading a squad of boys. Once that host of boys got some eight or ten paces from me, they halted. There was a flash of light far brighter than before, the music stopped, and a hushed silence fell over all. A most radiant joy encompassed all the boys and sparkled in their eyes, their countenances aglow with happiness. They looked and smiled at me very pleasantly, as though to speak, but no one said a word. Dominic Sovio stepped forward a pace or two, standing so close to me that, had I stretched out my hand, I would surely have touched him. He too was silent and gazed upon me with a smile. At last, Dominic Sovio spoke. Why do you stand there silent, as though you were almost devitalized? He asked. Aren't you the one who once feared nothing, holding your ground against slander, persecution, hostility, 
hardships and dangers of all sorts. Where is courage? Say something. I force myself to reply in a stammer, I do not know what to say. Are you Dominic Sovio? Yes I am. Don't you know me anymore? How come you are here? I asked, still bewildered. Sovio spoke affectionately. I came to talk with you. We spoke together so often on earth. Do you not recall how much you loved me, or how many tokens of friendship you gave me and how kind you were to me? And did I not return the warmth of your love? How much trust I placed in you? So why are you tongue-tied? Why are you shaking? Come and ask me a question or two. Summoning my courage, I replied, I am shaking because I don't know where I am. You are in the abode of happiness, Sovio answered, where one experiences every joy, every delight. Is this the reward of the just? Not at all. Here we do not enjoy supernatural happiness but only a natural one, though greatly magnified. Might I be allowed to see a little supernatural light? No one can see it until he has come to see God as he is. The faintest ray of that light would instantly strike one dead, because the human senses are not sturdy enough to endure it. Here ends the narrative of St. John Bosco's dream. Thank you for supporting my channel. May God bless you and keep you. St. John Bosco, pray for us.